Hi, this is Discover Delicious presented by MotorWorks Mini. Come see the biggest Mini yet, the all new 2017 Countryman All 4. There's nothing Mini about it, only at MotorWorks Mini in Golden Valley. I'm your host, Leslie Miller, certified sommelier and owner of wine consulting firm Amuse. We are coming to you from South Lindale Liquor located in beautiful Southwest Minneapolis. Each week we feature some of the best restaurants, food trucks, breweries, and distilleries that the Twin Cities has to offer. Let's head inside to see what's happening this week with South Lindale Liquor. Hi, I'm Dan Campo, South Lindale Liquors. Uh, we are a family-owned uh, wine, beer, and spirit shop in South Minneapolis. We've been here for over 40 years, and I'm here today to talk to you about the State Fair and State Fair beers. So the first beer we're gonna talk about is East Lake Brewing's Kirby Pucker. Uh, Kirby Pucker is made in homage to the late great Kirby Puckett, uh, the Minnesota Twins. Uh, he was one of the stars of the World Series at the time, and these guys do some amazing things. Now this is a sour wheat beer that's modeled after what we call a classic Berliner Weiss. It's got tart lemon, gripping uh, acid, and that leads the way into a little farmhouse funk. Uh, let's talk about another beer. Castle Danger is releasing a grapefruit IPA. Now Castle Danger is located just north of Duluth. For any of you who have been up the North Shore, it's a great place I would highly encourage you to visit. Uh, at South Lindale Liquors here, we have the Castle Danger uh, Grapefruit IPA, the one that's being released at the State Fair. It is uh, absolutely wonderful and is only 6% alcohol by volume, so you can have a few without getting a little bit too buzzed. The third beer we're going to talk about is also a favorite of ours, Bent Paddle Mosaic Canoe. It's a crisp session pale ale, great beer for the State Fair. We also sell it here at South Lindale Liquors and we support all of the Bent Paddle line. Uh, they've got some really amazing stuff. We would like to thank our host today, South Lindale Liquor, for having us. We have a lot in today's show, so let's get started. Hi, I'm Ted Marty. I'm the president and the fifth generation a descendant of August Shell. So August Shell came to New Ulm. Um, he actually came through Cincinnati and then moved to New Ulm with a, a, a group of Germans. So that deer symbol followed August Shell to the United States and then he began raising white-tailed deer. And so we still today um, have the deer park. But August Shell loved flowers. It was part of the atmosphere of the brewery. And so he began putting in perennials in the beginning. He traveled to California sometimes, and so he would bring stuff back from California and put it in his garden. And in particular, that we called it a little gazebo back there. It's actually, uh, it goes back into the Middle Ages. It's a fountain with actual bird cages up in the top. So he loved his garden and uh, we've kept it up ever since. So behind me is our is August Shell's, we always called it the mansion. And he built it in 1885. It looks, it looks really huge when you're looking at it, but it's actually a, ra a rather narrow house. And unfortunately he only lived he got to live in there for six years. He passed away in 1891. And uh, of course his wife stayed there until she passed away. And then George and Emma Marty moved in. And, um, and then it got passed down to their daughter. And then ultimately my folks lived in there. And then in uh, 1969, my father, Warren Marty, took over. And this was the probably the hardest time because now the big guys were, uh, their influence because of uh, the media, television, uh, grew immensely. Um, there was sort of a feeling that, you know, if it was far away, it had to be really good beer, you know, as opposed to local. And uh, so those are the times when you saw lots and lots of family breweries go out of business. They, they threw in the towel, you know, we're not making any money, let's just cash out. We were fortunate, we still had great local support. I took over in 1986, and this is the, the beginning of the craft brewing wave. Early on, we started, uh, we, we began our own craft beers, but we also brewed for other people quite a bit. They call that contract brewing. And then in 2002, we acquired the Grain Belt Brewery, the, the, the rights to the beer, not the actual brewery. Um, but at that point, we quit doing contract brewing because we were simply too busy. As it becomes more and more important that uh, breweries appeal to the local population, um, 
We've invested pretty heavily in the grounds. Uh, we've opened up our beer garden here. That was several years ago, um, but it continues to grow every year where we have music on Sundays and uh, the opportunity for people to sit in a real kind of authentic German beer garden. Uh, in the plant, we continue to try to improve every year with uh, the addition of new equipment and obviously are always looking for uh, new products to introduce in the craft line and on the American lager side, Grain Belt, uh, we always you know, continue to look for new products in that vein too. So we've introduced Grain Belt Blue and uh, that's been a big, big success for us and uh, it was a draft only and uh, next year we're going to introduce it in uh, bottles and cans. So. So we think our heritage speaks for itself. We're the second oldest family owned brewery in the country. Very proud of our heritage. And we would welcome anybody to stop down and visit us. Uh, obviously the summer is the best, but anytime we've got a great tour of the brewery, uh, lots of history that you can uh, absorb when you come down here. The grounds are beautiful. And uh, uh, if you want to visit a German brewery in the United States, we're the one. Hi there, I'm John Abdo. I'm the president and CEO of MyBurger. And we're on site today at our location at Stadium Village near the University of Minnesota campus. So my burger was started by my family back in 2004 with a mission to create the best burger in the Skyway downtown Minneapolis. And shortly thereafter, we realized that we could probably take it outside of the Skyway and bring it to every neighborhood in the Twin Cities that we saw was fit for a great burger joint. So the original burger is our standard take on your classic American burger. We've got ketchup, mustard, and we've got some sweet pickles and fried onions on there as well. And then your choice of various cheeses. The California is the Minnesotan take on a California burger. So it's got lettuce, tomatoes, and mayonnaise on it. The classic bacon cheeseburger is uh, bacon, cheese, and then it's a standard California setup as well. So lettuce, tomatoes, and mayonnaise on that. The grilled chicken is a all natural chicken breast. Uh, we finish it off on the griddle, and then that comes with your choice of toppings. Uh, the crispy chicken is kind of our take on a uh, school lunch chicken patty. So it's gonna be 100% natural ground chicken, and then it's gonna be uh, deep fried for some extra flavor. The fish is gonna be a uh, breaded and fried piece of the filet from an Atlantic cod, and that's gonna come with lettuce and tartar sauce. One classic thing that we like to throw on there is coleslaw if you're feeling adventurous. Uh, our veggie is made of mushrooms, rolled oats, bulgur wheat, uh, brown rice, and mozzarella cheese. Uh, and it's made to taste like an actual burger, so you're really not sacrificing anything taste-wise if you are a vegetarian. Uh, the turkey burger is a 100% natural, uh, it's 93% lean Genio turkey, hand patty here, finished off on the griddle. So the kind of fancy options are a little bit more of the premium types. So our kind of fancy menu, uh, we made it to be something that is pulling from our greatest hits uh, from the Burger of the Month that we've done over the years. So we've been doing Burger of the Month for a little more than five years. So we've got a ton of options from that and a lot of requests for those, uh, the best sellers to come back. So the kind of fancy menu is really an opportunity for those to rotate seasonally. So the most classic side, of course, to go with any burger is the fries. And our fries are gonna come out hot, crispy every time and seasoned with only 100% sea salt. Uh, we also have sweet potato fries. We started that within the last couple of years. Uh, a little bit of a healthier alternative to your regular fries. Uh, and they're gonna come out exact same size as our regular fries, but uh, crispy and then of course just a little bit sweet as well. Uh, so our onion rings are a take on your classic diner onion rings. Uh, they are beer battered and fried to order. Uh, and they're medium in size, so you get a little bit of the crispiness and a little bit of onion in every bite. Uh, so our shakes and malts are, again, they're a throwback to kind of your classic diner. So they're hand-scooped, hard-packed ice cream uh, mixed with whole milk. And then for the vanilla, that's your two ingredients. We also have chocolate, strawberry, a cookies and cream option, as well as a salted caramel. Uh, so for us, when we started out, we knew that moving outside of the Skyway, we want to provide an option for everybody that came in our doors. Craft beer is something that uh, we don't believe is gonna wane in popularity anytime soon. So we've got at least uh, about eight options usually at our stores, and they're all local craft beers that we're serving. So if you come in and it's a family of four, the parents are able to enjoy the meal, and instead of getting a Coca-Cola, they can get a craft beer to go along with their burger. 
And then usually we always see a couple of shakes come out with that as well. So everybody's happy at the end of the meal. So my favorite choice for a beer, I guess I wouldn't call it a craft beer anymore, uh, but Ham's, the Land of Sky Blue Waters, uh, St. Paul's classic beer is available in every one of our stores. Uh, and it's actually the second best selling beer that we have. So I'm proud to see that every day. Uh, so you should be looking to come to my burger if you're looking for a fantastic uh, tasting burger, as well as some great service and a fun, vibrant environment that really is gonna suit your neighborhood. Hi, I'm Nick Kelly. I'm the general manager of Geno's in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, we're located right off East Hennepin and 4th Street in a historic part of the city here. Uh, we're part of a small growing restaurant group with other locations throughout the city and this is our newest endeavor and our first endeavor in the Northeast Minneapolis. Geno's was inspired by a lot of restaurants in New York where our owners spent a lot of time working and wanted to bring some of that classic Italian-American flavor back to Minneapolis here they thought was missing. We want to bring a friendly, local neighborhood feel to the area. Uh, there's a lot of new small restaurants, a really booming, growing area. Uh, there's a lot of small families, 20-somethings, as well as retirees. We've got a really diverse community here, and we just wanted something welcoming for everybody. Gino's features a laid-back, casual atmosphere, serving classic Italian favorites and some of our own twists. So we want to serve true comfort food, uh, kind of stuff we all grew up with, lasagna like mom used to make, red sauce that cooks on the stove all day long, uh, great meatballs from scratch. We want to serve some of the uh, classic New York diner favorites, chicken parmesan, we do a pork chop parmesan, some uh, porchetta. One of our signature menu items here are our meatballs. So we take a large Spanish green olive, stuff it with feta cheese, wrap it in our house-made meatball mix, bread it, deep fry it, and serve it floating on top of our house-made red sauce. One of our other signature appetizers is our panzerati. It's a mini calzone stuffed with mozzarella cheese, roasted red peppers, calmata olives, red onions, tomatoes. We serve a couple of salads as well as a bruschetta for those that want something a little fresh and lighter. We want to serve food that you're used to growing up with. Classics like spaghetti and meatballs, lasagna, chicken parmesan. Nothing too intimidating or something that's been missing from this area for a long time. a full bar including our house-made lemoncello, wine slushies. Our drink menu features some classic Italian cocktails including Negroni that we put a little bit twist on by adding grapefruit. We make a lemoncello sour with our house-made lemoncello. We also offer two different wine slushies. Our Sangria Slurpee features our house red wine, strawberry jam, brandy, a little lemon, and a little sugar. Our Scarpino is a classic Italian palate cleanser featuring our house-made lemoncello, prosecco, and a lemon sorbet. Another favorite is both the slushies mixed together. We offer all of our wines on tap here. And that allows us to serve both red and white at their proper temperatures. We serve lunch, happy hour, dinner, as well as late night here. We keep the kitchen open until 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. When the sun goes down, we turn down the lights, turn up the music for a little livelier atmosphere in the evenings. Gino's is our twist on the classic Italian diner, and we'd love for you to come in and give us a try. Hi, my name is Chastity Sorensen and I am the Marketing and Events Director for Craft & Crew Hospitality, the owners of Stanley's Northeast Barroom. We are located in Northeast Minneapolis on the corner of University and Lowry and we've been here for six years. Stanley's Northeast Barroom is a neighborhood place. Uh, we have 32 beers on tap featuring a lot of local favorites as well as some of the regional favorites. 
Find us on Untap to stay up to date on our craft beer list. Our menu features a lot of fun and delicious items. Stanley's is known for their nachos, their great burgers, and just fun atmosphere. Join us on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for our brunch experience like no other. Our menu is definitely sure to unlock some juicy secrets. Stanley's has a great Bloody Mary, and we have many mimosas to choose from. One of the things Stanley's is most proud of is our Beer and Bacon Fest. Our Beer and Bacon Fest is an, a local outdoor beer fest kicking off the summer season, featuring what we love most, beer and bacon. Beer and Bacon Fest blocks off four city blocks. We feature anywhere between 40 to 50 breweries. What really sets this beer fest apart is the bacon. So we feature many bacon vendors, anything from candied bacon to bacon popcorn, to vegan bacon, to bacon, bacon, bacon. Ah, uh, Beer and Bacon Fest, Northeast Minneapolis at Stanley's. good food, good people. I just love beer in itself and I love all types of beer so it's good to get out and to sample. Uh, I'm the Beer Fairy. I uh, promote Craft Tap. I'm here for the beer and the bacon and the pictures. And I'm here at the Stanley's Beer and Bacon Fest and I'm mostly here for the bacon and the beer and the lovely people. I'm Jeff Bull. I'm the national account manager for the August Shell Brewing Company. So second oldest family owned brewery in the country. So we're very happy to be here at the Stanley's Beer and Bacon Fest. We've been here since the very beginning. But the reason why we keep coming back is because you find true craft lovers here that want to experience your beers. We'll keep coming back. It's true craft beer fans out here and we will always be a part of it. Hi, I'm Angie Lee and I'm Word with Finnegan's and we donate all of our profits to Being the Hungry. Um, and we're here currently at the Stanley's Making a Beer Fest and I love this beer fest because we are currently in the reverse food truck and they allow us to have the truck here and collect donations um, and sample beer at the same time. Hey, I'm Steve from Riff Smokehouse. We're a barbecue smokehouse just up the road northeast. And today at Stanley's we're offering uh, our, our meat candy, bacon on a stick. We have two flavors. We have a sweet and spicy, got a little heat to it. And we have a, a sweet, little brown sugar glaze, uh, dry rub. Um, what we do is uh, we package it in a bag, heats up in 15 seconds, and you have sizzling bacon on a stick. Watch for future fests being held annually in May. Beer and Bacon Fest is just one thing that we do. Come on down to Stanley's and enjoy one of our 32 beers on tap, our great food, and bring along your furry friend for the best dog patio in town. Hi, I'm Brianna Julius, and I'm the marketing assistant here at Stanley's Northeast Bar Room. Our patio is dog friendly and offers many dog amenities such as a yoga mat, water, and complimentary vanilla woofers. In addition, we offer a one-of-a-kind dog menu for our furry friends featuring items such as canine chicken, turkey mutt loaf, and a pup burger, and more. We also offer $1 off dog entrees during our yappy hour daily from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So bring your four-legged friends and have a cold one on Stanley's dog friendly patio. watching Discover Delicious. We will be right back. Welcome to Motorworks Mini in Golden Valley, Minnesota. We have an extensive selection of new and used minis now at our Twin Cities Mini dealership. Stop by our showroom to experience what it's like to be behind the wheel of your favorite mini car. There's nothing quite like a mini. Fun, fuel efficient, and backed by one of the industry's best maintenance and warranty programs. Need help with financing? Our friendly customer service and our motoring experts are here to help you choose how to finance your new or used car. We are proud to be your Motorworks Mini dealership. Visit us today and see the new Countryman all four. There is nothing mini about it. There's more Discover Delicious in store right now. Hello, my name's Chris Rogers. I'm one of the proud owners of Lions Pub here on 6th Street in downtown Minneapolis. We are located right in the heart of the financial, theater, and sports districts and been here for over 30 years. Hi, my name's Ray Rogers. I'm with my brother Chris. I'm one of the owners of Lions Pub like to show you a little history of our place and show you what makes it classic and a place to go. This building that we're in right now is the Plymouth Building. It was built in 1910 for about a million dollars. Uh, it was one of the largest concrete structures at that time in the world. I think what separates us from other places is that we have a very comfortable environment. I mean, you walk in here, I think you got some of the warm classic wood that makes you feel kind of at home like you're in your own place. The ceilings, we still have the old tin ceilings. 
in the restaurant. Uh, a lot of a lot of places nowadays are so so big, and you know you still can see the rafters and it's sprayed black. I think it gives us the character. It makes it look a lot nicer during the summertime when the weather gets nice. We're able to open the big patio doors, and and you kind of see the sunshine come in. You can see the energy inside from outside, and vice versa. Got the patio rolling. It gives a real warm feeling of people feeling invited to come in here from the outside in. This is my first time here, and I had the chicken Caesar wrap today and it was fantastic. My first time as well I had the vegetable quesadilla it was fantastic and the salsa was absolutely amazing. We still put a lot on value everybody wants a value when they go out I, I believe that uh, and I know that our prices are the lowest downtown downtown gets a little spendy and we always stay below that. Uh, nothing else you can get some free popcorn. When, I, when we get into quality uh, we are American style type of food here uh, some people think well bar food, but th that's not what we do here. I mean, everything we do here is from scratch. It's not out of box, homemade. Uh, examples that we have is a homemade soup every day of the week. Uh, we have the beer cheese soup every day, if that's your style, or if you're over in Wisconsin and you feel like that's what you need. Our burgers are always fresh, never frozen. I mean, some of the big corporate places are trying to advertise that right now, and that's something we've done forever. Uh, some of the signature items that I say that you'd have to try when you came in here are our Chesapeake chicken wings. I know everybody has wings. Ours are a little different than anybody else's, and I just think they're one of the best. I'd also su suggest trying our Philly. I've been to Philadelphia, and they have shredded beef and uh, cheese Whiz. Ours is not that way. We have uh, prime rib that we serve on it, and all fresh spices, and. Uh, and ingredients and vegetables. I think that if you have the prime rib, if you don't think it's the best, which I know it is, it's definitely the biggest. Fish and chips is also something that we've had from the very beginning. We bred those in house, and I, I think they're awesome. They're one of our top sellers, and that would be also a big suggestion that I think I'd try. Soup and sandwich is a classic thing that we always do, and, and that's an everyday item that we, we do with the business people all the time. Of course, it's the world of tap beers right now, and everybody wants to sell tap beers. We definitely have our, our local favorites. We've had Lion's Lager on tap that's made locally uh, by Shells in New Ulm. Um, we do rotational beers all the time, so all the local beers that are sold right now, we continue to change them so you're updated with all the fresh new products or anything that's on tap or available locally or around the U.S., so you always get the best product. Directly connected to us is the Embassy Suites, just opened about six months ago, and we're just happy to be with neighbors with, it, with them. Lions Pub is a Nebraska watch site for the Cornhusker football games, so we have those on every Saturday with the sound, DJ, sometimes we even have the uh, alumni band in here playing. Now there's something that separates us uh, a lot from other places is that we have a DJ. We've done it all for every kind of parties. I mean, we've done small parties. If you want a group of four to come in for lunch, it's done. If you have a group of 30, someone's retiring, it's there. We've done parties from two to 200. Please come and visit us at Lions Pub, your friendly neighborhood bar in downtown Minneapolis. You're watching Discover Delicious. We will be right back. Stout's Pub and Grill is like no other. 24 craft beers on tap, juicy jumbo burgers, walleye and chips, and a wood-fired oven turning out tasty hand-tossed pizzas and flatbreads. Enjoy happy hour from 3 to 6 every day and 9 to 11 Monday through Saturday. At Stout's Pub and Grill, we feature the best seasonal cocktails in town. Stop by before or after fairground events or relax at the bar and watch the game on 19 big TVs. Book your next party, dine on the patio, and join us for lunch. We have great, fast, friendly service, and check out what's happening this week on Facebook. We are Stout's Pub and Grill. Here is this week's Discover Delicious destination, brought to you by MotorWorks Mini. Come see the biggest Mini yet, the all new 2017 Countryman All Four. There is nothing Mini about it, only at MotorWorks Mini in Golden Valley. Hi, I'm Wyatt Evans, chef and owner of Heirloom Kitchen and Bar in St. Paul. Heirloom aims to be an every occasion restaurant, a place for our neighbors to gather, eat, drink, and be merry. The core of what we do here at Heirloom is to pay homage to the past, the present, and the future on every plate. We aim to take ancient cooking techniques and traditional cooking techniques and filter them through a lens of a modern palate. Our goal when somebody walks into Heirloom is for us to present the best possible hospitality we can. Either from the front of house or the back of house perspective, we want people to feel welcome. We want people to feel like they're going to get a great experience, not just great food, not just great wine, but also great hospitality. We try to come out here as often as we can. It's right in the neighborhood. It's always delicious food. I love the wine list. The wine list is not a carbon copy of everybody else, and I can come here and get distinctive, unique stuff that you can't get everywhere else. 
One of the aims of the cuisine that we do at Heirloom is to try to have the best quality product we can. So if we can produce something in-house and do a better job than a purchase product, then we will definitely take the extra time to do that. We make all of our own bread in-house, we make our butter in-house, we make our yogurt in-house. Um, extra steps that some people might not take the time to do, but we feel that it is part of what modern farmhouse cuisine is and part of the total utilization of uh, all of the products. I think it's very important that they make everything in-house, from the bread to the butter. That's what keeps me coming back. A really good example of modern farmhouse cuisine would be uh, some of our bar snacks where we serve chicken liver mousse, for example, on grilled house-made bread. We also have a grilled bread snack right now that harnesses uh, smoked and whipped fat. Again, a, a byproduct that could be easily disposed of uh, that we harness into something that is delicious. Another dish that's kind of a hallmark of what we do here is the roast chicken. Uh, it represents almost a, a, a journey of cooking more so than, um, than just a technique or a dish. We're also going to be putting up a smoked whitefish salad um, with pickled cauliflower, house-made yogurt, and raisins. And this is a really good example of the food that we do here. It's very simple, it's very focused, there's not a lot of elements on the plate, but it delivers everything that you want from a dish. Salty, sour, sweet, creamy. Um, a little bit of acid to cleanse the uh, smokiness of, of, the, of the fish. The idea of heirloom comes from more than just a concept of a restaurant, but of a, a personal statement and a personal story. Um, you know, the, the idea is not about necessarily what or who we are, but what and who we're not. Not a chain, um, not a large corporate restaurant. The people who prepare your food are within uh, arm's reach. You can have a conversation with them, you can ask questions, knowledgeable service staff that are more than willing to get you the recipe um, and make uh, dietary accommodations as needed. The food that we do at Heirloom is thoughtful, seasonal, and product oriented. Um, we try to get a sense of place and time on every plate that we do. Less technique based, less bells and whistles, and a lot more focusing on the product that we bring in. One of the, here's one of the things that I've always appreciated about Wyatt is that he lets the ingredients shine, and I think that's what you see here at Heirloom. The vast majority of what we get in the doors here at Heirloom comes from people that I know, people who I've done business with over the decades, um, and people whose agricultural practices I'm comfortable with carrying their product in the restaurant. I feel like sourcing is a very big aspect of the cuisine that we do here. A carrot isn't a carrot, um, a chicken isn't a chicken. We aim to bring in the best possible product and manipulate it as, as minimally as possible uh, to make it as pure of an expression of, of what it is uh, and as pure of an expression of the ingredient as possible. Chef Wyatt does a great job, he's amazing and uh, he's the reason that this place is uh, such a highlight. We really think that you're going to enjoy it if you stop in and we hope you give us a try. That's it for this week. We would like to thank you for watching Discover Delicious presented by Motorworks Mini and Golden Valley and South Lindale Liquor for hosting us this week. Make sure to check out all of our sponsors and we hope that you visit all the delicious places we covered this week. Please make sure to tell a friend about Discover Delicious and be sure to watch the last past episodes on our website at discoverdelicioustv.com. I'm Leslie Miller. Thanks for watching Discover Delicious.